With tax reform and budget control, our economy will be free to expand to its full potential, driving the bears back into permanent hibernation. That's our economic program for the next four years. We're going to turn the bull loose. Turning the ball loose was supposed to create wealth and prosperity for everyone, but instead it gave economic power to a psychopathic elite, the so-called 1%. We now have an economy that enriches a small band of corporate freeloaders, while social mobility for everyone else is overwhelmingly downwards. This is why the middle classes are disappearing into poverty, in virtually every developed nation, while the rich just gets richer. The elite wants total control, whatever the cost. It owns half of all global wealth, yet still wants more. It wants an army of work-consumer drones, human sponges from which it can wring every drop of value. And it wants the endless extraction of natural resources, no matter the destruction. This is economics, by the psychopath, for the psychopath. But history tells us that this is what elites do when unchallenged they become remote from everyone else. My name is Peter Batt and my book looks at how ordinary people can take back power because we are much more powerful than we think. Psychopathic systems though make no concessions without threats and so we must look beyond the political system and target the elite's assets if we are to bring change. Assets such as its intellectual property, its brands and the dreams it sells us via advertising. History also tells us that debts tend to grow beyond the means to pay them and today our debts to the elite are huge and illegitimate just trying to repay them could condemn us to years of economic misery. We should refuse to pay these debts and get them cancelled, as was common in previous civilizations when they became too onerous. History shows that debt cancellation can benefit everyone, including those at the top. But we also have another incentive to challenge today's psychopath economy. Previous civilizations were regional so the survivors of collapse could move elsewhere and start afresh. With one exception, Easter Island, a remote mini-civilization in a constrained environment, its people exhausted the land that sustained them, bringing on themselves a terrible, lingering decline. Today's global civilization means the planet is our constrained environment, and if we fail to heed its limits, like the Easter Islanders before us, we'll find no escape from the consequences.